Well, the title was uh, chosen to attract more people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but of course, like Paul says, saying it another way, there are more women sex slaves than female combatants. Uh, okay. I, I don't want Here, to thank you very, very much. Uh, you mentioned a couple of times how now there seems to be uh, what you call a critical mass in the Security Council, uh, which gives reason for some optimism about follow through, since there have been several decades without follow through on 1325, also a Security Council resolution. What are the measures or the, the what are the measures for monitoring the Security Council's follow-through? How do we know that the critical mass includes the five permanent members who individually can stop any progress through self-interest? So say a little bit about the process of executing and monitoring uh, through the Security Council. Well, uh, with a special representative, with this mandate of uh, coordinating all the UN efforts for implementation of the resolutions, but also to uh, work for pre-deployment training, to uh, work against impunity, setting up, a, that would be a task force, uh, as it states in the draft resolution, who will monitor all this. And there would be a report, uh, regular reports to the Security Council of So it would be very much up to uh, the uh, special representative, uh, how much fire there is in her or him, uh, and to push through it. But the mandate, as it's written now, gives ample uh, uh, measures to, to do something really about it. So there is no way one somebody can come in with a veto and get away with it, I would say. Yes, please. <laughs> so this is seen, yeah. um, Violence against women can be a consequence against conflict among groups, different groups. And I was wondering from your experience in Africa, can you um, talk about the nature of that conflict among ethnic groups and why it's so difficult to resolve, which if it could be resolved more easily and quickly, we might have less violence against women. Well, ethnicity is used, I mean, the experience I've had, the impression I have, also from the Balkans, that its ethnicity is used as a, for political reasons. I mean, it's, they, it's not that people have lived uh, of different ethnic groups close to each other for generations, all of a sudden they become enemies. Not like that, it is because of hate propaganda. And we saw in Cote d'Ivoire the impact of hate media, terrible. It's very important that the UN has a UN radio in a peacekeeping mission to counteract hate media. But, it's always, almost, almost always, it is uh, politically driven, politically uh, policy driven. This uh, uh, animosity between ethnic groups, I would say. Do you agree? On Broadway last season was a stunning play titled Rooms, and the essence of it was the a woman who's raped, and it's set in Africa is victimized and has to survive on more than one level. And part of the victimization is the attitude of her own people and her own society to her rape. And I, can, I, I mean, I certainly hope and commend that the United Nations is going to do something on a broad level. But what do we do about the attitudes of so many people, and in Bosnia also, that a woman who is raped is ruined for life. Yes, this must be a national, a local issue, of course. And uh, we heard uh, in a conference we were at the UN the other day how somebody from Burundi said that um, uh, her experience was, she was Burundi herself, that when somebody had been raped, a young girl had been raped that was a baby, and she, the person who mentioned this, asked the mother of this daughter who has been raped and a baby, what do you want? And she said, I want you, the United Nations, can you, can you work, can, do you know who committed a crime? Yeah, maybe we can find out. Then I want you 
to find this guy, get him here, and marry my daughter. That was more important for the social status and blah, 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 than to, ex you know, for punish the punishment. And this contradicts our view, of course. So we have to take all these things into consideration. But I mean, you need local, you need to deal with trauma, you need to deal, deal with the reconciliation, whatever, and also with impunity. It's very complex, and uh, it's not easy. And, and Unifam is pushing very much for, for these, these aspects that you mentioned, how to deal with it. It's not only to go in and arrest them, put them on trial, because it will not solve the traumas. Let's give Ambassador well, one last question. Yeah. I know students are getting ready to go back to class, so Charlie? Um, I'd like to have you back here. Um, you mentioned the correlation between gender inequality and poverty. And I'm wondering if you could spell that out. What, what's the well, the, there is, I mean, uh, it shows where there is gender inequality, more gender, but there's less poverty. I mean, it's, it's a weapon for poverty reduction because if you have active women in this case, um, then more could tell you more even afterwards uh, how you saw. Uh, among refugees, if you turn into this person, you see passive men and active women. Uh, and, and therefore, it, it is important also with poverty. But I get the last, last bit because you have had it, you have done that all the time. Thank you. Uh, just very concerned with the fact that uh, the political solution umbrella is taken away from the United Nations and then undertaken by NATO, which have apparently their own agenda. Uh, I served there for 28 months of years ago. They are a completely different group. So one thing, I do need to respond, but just wanted to hear that. And further, the issues of uh, healthy, healthy, and healthy <coughs> cleansing, the superpower, healthy superpower, wants to degrade <coughs> the ones receiving violence by terrorizing women and by planting their seed into the womb of that woman so it would be a perennial pain to the woman herself and to her social group. That's something that needs to be addressed because a woman in that sense never gets rid of that pain or that stigma or my asthma. It's true. And on the first uh, thing, I can say that in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. there are three different missions from the international community. The American, Freedom, the ISAF, and the tiny UNAMA, the United Nations Mission, Junior Partner Day. These three missions, according to our research, undermine each other because the, the population gets confused, especially when they're born. Thank you very much. <laughs>